In this video, we're going to go ahead and cover the Create menu. Uh, in Create, we're able to create uh, basically points and uh, line work through existing data. Um, so in Create Plan, uh, we're able to create points uh, by giving it uh, some, uh, some information as far as how far we want this point to be created from an existing point. For example, for this point, I'm going to put in a distance of 10 feet. Um, I can choose an angle to put this at. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip this for now. Uh, I'm also going to skip elevation. Uh, so you always have to give a point a name. Uh, I'll just leave it at 115. You can choose whether or not you want to give it a description. And by default, the layer is zero. Uh, you can type in a new layer that if you want to set it to, or if you click the list here, you can actually pick uh, one of your existing layers to put this point on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick 1A. Uh, so I've picked that. Uh, I can go back to my map view by uh, jumping out uh, or jumping between uh, the input form button. And if I select this point, uh, it's going to give me a preview of where it's going to place this point. Um, I can rotate this point and, and basically move the angle of where I want to put it. Um, you'll notice that the angle basically goes 0 is straight up, uh, 90 is to the right, uh, 180 is down and 270 is directly left. Um, so you can, uh, you can kind of use that to, uh, to place the point where you want to place it. Um, you can rotate these with the presets, which are preset to uh, 45, 90, and 30 degrees. Uh, so I can rotate this every 90 degrees if I needed to, or if I switch back to 45, I can uh, go by 45s. If you do designate your own angle, for example, um, if we put um, 22 degrees, um, it's going to basically put it in a 22 degree angle. Um, uh, kind of works like the azimuth. Uh, so you can use that to, uh, to however you need to use it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to 90 degrees uh, and it's going to go directly right. Um, I can choose whether or not I want a line drawn from my uh, start point here to the point that I'm going to create. So for example, if I have this checked and I click create, it will uh, create a line for uh, It'll create a line between the two points. If you don't need a line there, uh, you can just continue to create these points. Um, this will automatically uh, increase the, the point name by one. So uh, 115 uh, was my first point, and 116 is my next point. 117 is going to be my third point. Um, with this, we can also undo. Um, hitting the undo button will undo what you just created. Uh, so if you've created a bunch of points that you don't need and accidentally you know, uh, went off in, a, in the wrong direction, uh, you can click undo uh, and it will get rid of those points that were created. If you create points and you jump out of this menu, meaning you go into uh, create uh, line work uh, and then you go back to create plan, the undo option will no longer work. It only works while you're still in uh, in the menu you currently are in. Um, okay, so moving on to line work, uh, and line work will actually let us create points between lines. Uh, I'm sorry, let us create lines between points. So if I select these two points, it's giving me a dotted line of what that would look like. Uh, I can continue my selection to basically go through uh, as many as I need. Uh, I can click create, and they'll create uh, my lines between those points. Uh, once again, I'm going to go ahead and undo these, um, so you can create basically line segments between you know all these points that you need, um, and you can use these as boundaries uh, or to represent boundaries or to represent walls. Uh, totally up to you on how you want to use these. Um, very useful for if you don't have any kind of blueprint and you're kind of building your own. Um, definitely uh, useful for for creating like wall boundaries. Um, we can also create uh, arcs and not just lines. So you define, you can define a radius by in the input form button, and it'll create the arc for you. You can choose which arc you want, whether it's the uh, the shorter one or the uh, the bigger arc, and you can choose which side you want it on as well um, with these toggles here. Um, our next option here is line segmentation, and we can segment lines by uh, either by uh, number of segments or by segment lengths. So with number of segments, if I choose nine segments, it's going to divide my line into nine equal segments. So whichever line I select, it'll show me that it's dividing it into nine equal segments. Um, if I choose uh, segment lengths, um, it will divide it basically from going from my start point. It will create uh, 
um, lengths of three feet, six inches, or whatever you put in here. Um, uh, and here you can see, here's my start point. So it'll go three feet, six inches, all the way up until it can't. And obviously this is gonna be too short. So uh, this segment's gonna be smaller. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clear my selection and I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete this line. Uh, so in line work, you can actually select lines and delete them as well. Uh, Note that you can only delete line segments that you've created, so I can't delete, uh, for example, my grid lines um, or anything from here that's uh, given to me uh, in my model. It's, you can only delete lines that you have created. Uh, so moving on to Point Manager. Uh, point Manager has a lot of options in here. Um, so the first thing that we're going to go over is actually editing a point. Uh, so if I select this point here and I select my Input Form button, I can make some changes to this point. For example, I can change uh, what attributes it has. Uh, so if I want to get rid of that and I'm going to change my color to red instead of blue, I can click apply edits. And now when I click the information icon and select my point, I can see that all that information has changed. Uh, so color is now red and uh, that last attribute has been deleted. Um, you can also uh, move the point. So if you change the X, Y, Z coordinates, you will move the point. Um, I would recommend against this unless you actually know you need to move that point. You know, let's say two feet to the to the right or to the left. Um, if it's two feet to the right, you would change your uh, your X axis and you would increase it. If it's two feet to the left, you would decrease the X axis. Um, you can also designate this point as a control point. And what that will do, if you check this box. Um, and we look back at this point. Whoops, I didn't hit apply edit. Uh, so if we check that, uh, so select my point. We're gonna uh, check control point, hit apply edits. So that changes this point into a triangle. So it makes it easy for you to identify a, a point that you need to stake out versus a point that is a um, uh, control point. And we can always go ahead and change this back. So if I jump back in here, uncheck control point, hit apply, um, it's going to go ahead and change it back to a regular point. Um, our next option here is um, uh, offsets. So we can create point offsets. So I need to select two points to create a line. And based on my input uh, in the input form button, I can create some offsets. So I can have a offset of one foot and I'm actually gonna go ahead and change this to two uh, at an interval of every, I'm gonna go ahead and say four feet uh, with a start distance of five feet. So if I look at my, uh, if I look at my preview here, I can see that here's my start point going this way. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a start distance of five feet. So it skips five feet and it starts my interval uh, of creating points every four feet, and I am two feet off of this line. Now, you can create points either on one side of the line, I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's the previews. So you can create them on one side, uh, you can jump to the other side, or you can have these points on both sides by using this toggle here. Uh, we can also create a single point offset. Uh, so with a single point offset, the basically the only difference is is that um, we don't have an interval. Uh, we just have the horizontal offset. Uh, we can have a vertical offset and the start distance. So how far do you want to go from your starting point? Um, so that's going to be offset on a line. We can also offset on a arc. So if I select this, uh, it's basically giving me an arc. Um, when you click the input form button, you kind of have the same options here uh, with the exception of radius. So you can also uh, change the radius of your arc uh, to create that. Um, and when we go back here, uh, we can uh, switch between where the start location is. So if I click this first icon here, my start, uh, uh, my start point starts from here. Click it again, it switches to the other side. Um, once again, um, you can choose which arc you want, and then you can also choose which side you want it on. Our next option here is going to be uh, create a point between lines. So if I select this here, it's, it basically gives you instructions and tells you select two lines and tap between them to preview a center point. So if I select this line here and this line here, and then click somewhere in the center, 
um, anywhere I click in between those lines, it's going to show me where the center point between those two lines is. Um, this is an easy way to create uh, sleeves in a wall uh, if you have one that was missing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clear my selection. I'm going to go back to point. Um, so we also have this icon here, which will allow us to uh, basically place a point anywhere we click. Um, it will not snap to anything. It's just going to place where you click it. Um, so you can create a point just basically kind of arbitrary and, um, and kind of in, in space and, and use that as a, as a start location for uh, maybe when you're setting up a uh, uh, with a blank drawing and you just want a reference point to use. Um, you can do that. I'll go ahead and clear this out. Uh, so one more thing we can do is we can actually delete points. Um, so using my selection box, I can select all these points here and I can click delete and it will delete all the points that I've had there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click undo because I actually need those points. Um, you can also use, uh, you can also select points by clicking on them um, as well as using the um, in current view icon. So this will select all the points in my current view. So it's found 15 points. And once again, you can uh, delete them or um, do what you want with them, basically. Um, so we can also actually edit multiple points at once. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to change the layer of all these points, I can select all of them, uh, go, into, go into my input form button, and I can choose a uh, layer. So currently it says varies because those, uh, those points are on different layers. So I can uh, choose and uh, select a new layer for them uh, for all those points to be on a single layer, um, whether I type one in and create one, or I can go to my list and, and pick a new uh, layer for them. Um, and the last thing you can do is you can change the elevation of multiple points. Um, so uh, sometimes contractors like to uh, like to see their hangers on the floor, they like to see them at a zero elevation, uh, and a lot of times when they come out from the CAD department, um, they do have elevation on them. So what you can do is you can select all your hangers, um, go into the uh, input form button, and then change all the elevation to zero. Okay, so moving on to uh, from model. Um, so from model will allow us, us to create points from our model or from our back background objects. Uh, for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn a bunch of these layers off because it's, it's a little crowded. So I'm going to select my, select my grid layer and turn everything else off. And now that I have my grid, I can create points uh, basically with uh, by selecting uh, these options here. So if I wanted to create endpoints, I check endpoints and uh, wherever I click. Uh, so if I, I clicked on these two lines, it's created them on the endpoints of the line. So if I select midpoint as well and I select this line, um, it's going to create the point at the midpoint of my line. So the line ends at the beginning of the uh, circle around the D. Um, so if I select this line here, even if I click not at the midpoint, it's still going to create it at the midpoint there. Um, and also because I have endpoint selected, it created the endpoint there because it was in, in the current view. If I uncheck midpoint and uh, select the endpoint here, um, it also picked up all the endpoints of these lines um, because I was zoomed out way too much. Um, but we can clear those um, by uh, selecting them again. Whoops. Let's go ahead and clear these out as well. Um, so if you wanted to select, uh, if you wanted to create uh, intersections, I can check the intersection box, uh, click on my intersections, and wherever, wherever it sees an intersection, it's going to create it. Once again, if you have multiple ones selected and it sees that this line has endpoints and midpoints, uh, it's going to create them as well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and clear this out, and we're going to go ahead and move on to grid. Uh, so grid will allow us to create a grid based on some uh, options we set up with. Uh, so if I click my uh, input form icon, uh, I can choose how many columns my grid can have. So I'm going to put in something like eight. Uh, and for rows, I want nine rows. And they're going to be spaced uh, 10 feet on the width. And let's go with eight feet on the height. So now when I go back to here, uh, to my map view, I can see that here's my grid and here's it, it is spaced out. Um, you can also assign a start location for it. Um, it by default, it jumps to 100. Uh, you can pick whatever start location you want. 
uh, you can choose the uh, grid names that it'll start with. So if you put like G-1, um, it'll start naming the points going from G-1 all the way up to um, however many uh, points it creates. Um, you can choose a description for them as well as put them on a layer. Uh, up until you hit create, uh, these are just kind of a preview. So if I do hit create, it's going to go ahead and process and it's found 72 points. So I have uh, all these points going from, um, I guess grid 13 was my uh, start point, and I'll go all the way up to uh, grid 72. I'm going to go ahead and undo these because I just uh, don't need all these points in here. And then I'm going to clear my selection. And the last part here is pattern. So we can create a pattern that we can apply to our points. Uh, so I'm going to create something uh, pretty simple. Uh, so I'm just going to create this uh, this pattern here. Uh, and once I'm done, I click Add Points. So this allows me to uh, basically uh, create this pattern. Uh, I'm going to hit Save Pattern. And I'll just leave it called Pattern 3. So I'll hit Save Pattern again. And what I can do is I can now apply this pattern uh, to points that I have. So I'm going to bring back uh, my uh, all of my points and all of my uh, background. Um, so let's say I have a um, I have a um, a point that is at, at the exact center of a column. Obviously, I can't use that. But what I can do is I can uh, take my pattern, and I think mine was pattern three. I can load it in, and uh, let's say this uh, this point here was at the center of a column. If I click on it, it will put all these points around the column. So what you can do is you can uh, have a preset, like like a two, two foot offset from your uh, from the center of your column. Um, you can create this pattern, apply it, and now you have basic control points that you can use. All you need to do is actually mark them from the uh, mark, create the offset from the column and uh, mark these points out.